Time for Money Matters Update. Here's our financial expert, Rabina ahmed Hawk. Rabina, good morning to you. And we're going to start with the federal finance minister, Christia Freeland, who is meeting with her provincial counterparts to discuss Alberta's proposed withdrawal from the Canadian pension plan. Can you give us some context here and just how concerned should Canadians be about this potential move? So they should be very concerned. So she's meeting with the, the, the finance ministers across the province, uh, across the country from provinces uh, to talk about Alberta's proposal to leave CPP and create their own pension plan uh, as Quebec has. Quebec has the QPP. And so they want to leave. They feel they're not getting good value out of the CPP. But the problem is if they were to leave, this this breakup, which they're saying would be a, like, like a divorce happening, could really financially desta- destabilize the CPP. And Christia Freeland, of course, wants to avoid that. She doesn't want Alberta to leave uh, the Canada Pension Plan. Some calculations say that they could be owed almost half of what the assets are. Uh, that Some people have criticized that, saying that that's an overestimation. Uh, but it would still be a very a significant chunk of the CPP would be given to Alberta uh, as their payments um, and investments that have gone up in the last uh, 40, 50 years. Um, and that would have a huge impact on, on CPP for for rest of Canada as well. Hmm. Uh, Ravina, the head of the Bank of Canada said this week that government spending is putting pressure on inflation and it would be helpful if monetary and fiscal policy were rowing in the same direction. Are the government and bank at odds? Is this keeping prices high? <laughs> I don't think they're at odds. I think he was making a comment about what is actually happening in the economy. So the expectation is that inflation will be at 2% by 2025. So we're going to have higher inflation throughout the 2024 uh, year. And part of that reason, he's saying, is increased government spending on things like affordable housing and other programs that are are set to be announced in the fall economic uh, statement uh, that will put more money in pockets of those who are struggling the most. So that, of course, allows them to spend more money in the economy, which keeps inflation uh, higher. So I don't know if there it was a question of him saying, you know, they should or shouldn't be doing it, but really making a statement as to this is why we are going to see higher inflation in 2024 because of these payments that are still going out to those who do need it uh, as they suffer through the higher cost of living. All right. We're talking about this just a few moments ago. Wanted to get your take, Rabina. DoorDash telling its customers that they may have to wait longer for food if their order does not include a tip. Is this good yeah. for business, do you think? <laughs> I, I mean, tipping is always something that's appreciated when you get a service. And now that you can track it through an app, I, I don't see why they wouldn't use this data to say, you know, this is a good customer, someone who really tips well. We want to be able to get the food to them quickly. Um, it does put a sour taste in the mouth of those who already complain that DoorDash and other Uber Eats, other food delivery services are quite expensive compared to what we used to pay. So you'd order pizza, someone would bring it to you, you'd pay them, you know, cash. Now there's a service charge of you using that that uh, that uh, delivery service then you have to tip the driver and then sometimes there's an extra fee of just using uh, the app itself and so all of these things just add up and make people want to just not order so it may deter a lot of people from using DoorDash if this is the way that they're going to treat their customers Mm -hmm. all right well we're gonna have to leave it there today Rubina thank you so much thanks for having me